Here we are at last, the final game of 1988. And just to pull back the curtain a little bit, this one's getting edited on the final day of 2021. I'm going to take that as a good omen. If you're familiar with the game Guevara, it's for one simple fact. It's the Famicom game that lets you play as Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. The actual storyline of the game is that it's the Cuban Revolution, and those two are going to take out Batista and the rest of the Cuban army on their own. I gotta say, I actually kind of admire them leaning into the absurdity of the one-man army by making them real-world people. Obviously, a game like that would never sell in the United States, so when SNK released it here, it was given the more generic name Guerrilla War. This was originally an arcade game, and it was built very similar to Ikari. The two Ikari ports we've seen so far were both done by Micronix, and were next to unplayable. Guevara is by SNK, and it is an absolutely spectacular game. Guevara is a top-down shooter where the B button fires your main gun, and the A button throws grenades. Sometimes you'll find tanks, hitting the A button jumps into those, and if you start hearing an alarm, the tank's about to explode, so hit the A button to jump back out. Your default gun is kind of puny, but fortunately, weapon power-ups are dropped everywhere. Okay, not necessarily everywhere, but red enemies will always drop them, and they're often hidden inside terrain that you can use explosives to destroy. The L turns your gun into a rocket launcher. It's got good range and is great for clearing out terrain. But even better is the T. That's a rocket launcher whose shells explode into shrapnel. The S is a spread shot. It's just three bullets, and given the short range and how they can't pierce terrain, it's really my least favorite option. The F, on the other hand, is my favorite one. It's the flamethrower, and it cuts through everything. It's got more range than you think, and going through terrain is a huge advantage in this game. A lot of enemies will hide behind things, or get up just out of your reach, and shooting through terrain is a huge advantage. Of course, you could always use grenades for this, and there's grenade power-ups too. The bees make the grenade shot larger, while the C's make the next grenade you throw destroy everything on the screen. And everything includes landmines which are invisible until you get a bit close to them. Other icons you can pick up are the N, which is just worth some points, and the face, which is an extra life. Guevara is a game that just hurls extra lives at you, particularly with scoring opportunities. You'll find hostages tied up throughout the game. Rescuing them is a thousand points, but if you kill them, it's minus 500. And you'll also see some special events, like this guy chasing a woman, or some animals running out across the battlefield, there's a lot of opportunities to run up the score and get even more lives. There are 10 stages in Guevara, and they're actually pretty long stages. They usually take over 5 minutes, and there's some tough bosses at the end. Since any hit can kill you, it only takes one shot from a boss to knock you back down to no weapon. Fortunately, the bosses aren't too tough, Except maybe these guys, who if they catch you, will pick you up and throw you to the next stage. The fifth level is a special stage where you're riding in a minecart and can whip people to rescue them. And they have the camera spin around the car when it does a turn. Okay, it's not the best animated turn, but that's still pretty impressive for an 8-bit machine. When you get a game over in Guevara, you can continue from right where you died. In the US version, they strip this back so that it requires a code. As you're running through the stage, there's a few special things to keep an eye out for. Enemies that are jumping can't be hit. You have to wait for them to reach the ground before you can shoot them. Similarly, you'll find some enemies that will duck into terrain when you shoot at them. To deal with them, what I usually do is make them duck, then throw a grenade timed to land on them when they pop up. Flying enemies are a little bit strange here. If you run into one of them, they'll kill you. But you can throw grenades straight into them as well. Sadly, I didn't have anybody to demonstrate it for me, but the two-player mode is really good in this game. With both players going, it feels like you're just an engine of destruction. There's a cheat code in the game that'll let you start at any stage, except for the final one. When you're choosing between one and two players, hold down A and B and press Start on the first player controller. That starts the game at this menu, where you can pick your stage, 
and also change the difficulty level. Since it's just a top-down run and gun, it's not like Guevara is a very complicated game. But if you get tired of marching through the jungles of Cuba, they put a second game on the cartridge. Do the cheat code to get to the stage select, pick stage 5, and then on both player 1 and player 2, hold down up A and B. Press start and you begin a whole new game. This is a port of Sasuke vs. Commander, SNK's very first arcade game. It was a Space Invaders clone, only you were fighting Ninja. Unfortunately, this bonus mode is not as well realized as it could be. You only have one life, and when you die, you go back to Guevara's main menu. Since the game begins as soon as you hit start, there's no attract mode or separate title screen. And it doesn't show you your score. All that said, it's still the most impressive easter egg on a Famicom cartridge. And that cart will cost you. Guevara is known as being one of the better Famicom games, and it wasn't particularly common. So a cheap copy will run you about $50. But if you're collecting Famicom carts, this is a good one. It's a vertical run and gun with a lot of destroyable terrain. It's generous with the continues, so it's not hard to beat, but it's hard to do well. The level design is a lot of fun, though perhaps a little bit repetitive with how it lays out some areas. And there's plenty of secrets to find. I don't think Kvaro would make my top 10, but it's definitely in my top 10%. Perhaps the biggest problem with the game is just how long it is, and that's mitigated by the level select code. It feels like SNK thought of everything. <laughs>